Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and well Christmas is almost upon us so today we have a big one. Today I'm going to compare two of my favorite grinders the F83 with my Cafetec MC5. You may say Jack you're not comparing like with like. Um, the F83 uh, flat bar grinder and a kind of a mid-range grinder, Cafetec high-end and conical. But, 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 uh, Cafetec does not really taste as your regular conical grinder. And also in between uh, high-end grinders, it's not the, the most expensive. The F83, on the other hand, does not taste like your typical flat bar grinder. And in between those kind of mid-range grinders, it's relatively pricey. So what we're going to do today? I'm going to uh, definitely pull some uh, espresso shots. We're going to do flat white and we're also going to do a pour over. And by the end of this video, I will just tell you my final conclusions. So if you as excited as myself, definitely click like, subscribe and well, let's do it. When you put them side by side, the size about the same. Now, uh, DF83, almost immediately I like the shape. It's a kind of something you would expect from the uh, good single dose grinder. Nice smooth edges, nice wooden cup. It took some time for me to get used to those square sharp design of uh, MC5. Right now I really like it, but it, it took some time. So. The F83 comes in two colors, a black and a glossy white. Both of them look awesome. There is that uh, blower on top, there is a wooden cup. You can also uh, put the hopper, but why would you? What I really like is that grind indicator. Uh, you can change the settings. If you change the burst, you can change where your zero point is very easily and it's very clear very visible uh, you can change the brew settings from um, pretty much from espresso all the way to french press and so on on in one revolution even the grinder tells you which zone you should be on made out of metal when you touch it you immediately know this is uh, what well, it feels quality. It feels quality. I really like that light on the side here. What I don't like though is that uh, wire, the electric uh, cable on the side. It comes with all the accessories you really need. So here you see a dosing cup and a dosing funnel. There is a, a RDT a bottle. Well, I don't use it, but you, you, you get it. All the accessories that you get are pretty much adequate to the price. No complaints about that. This grinder weights about 11.7 kg. Internally, it holds that massive 550 watts power uh, engine. Uh, RPMs 1400. Um, and it really grinds fast and because of that powerful engine it can sometimes jump when you turn it on and that's with that's how it sounds without uh, any pins and it does vibrate it's not a problem but you can feel the vibration so when you put that on here it will rattle so it's not a grinder itself it's just that top here and well, the most important part, obviously, the burrs. Very easy to access them. You just unscrew the top. The grinder, I've been using it for, well, what, six weeks or maybe more than that. The grinder is always clean inside. And those big, massive 83 millimeter flat item mill burrs. The one thing that I, I'm, I don't know and I cannot comment about is the quality of the internals. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an engineer, so. I have no idea. Nobody really complained about the F64 and this is definitely an upgrade. So we would think that this will be a high quality internals as well. Now here we have a different beast. So that's a high end grinder and that's pretty much the only color you get. You can uh, upgrade to, to um, kind of more black design. You can get that red top but you have to pay extra all the upgrades if you calculate the price you're not far away from the entire price of the f83 
83. Both grinders are solid, both grinders are made out of metal. MC5 is slightly heavier, so it weights uh, 12.7 kg. Accessories that you are given with this grinder, kind of a mixed reaction. Some of them good quality, like the WDT. Some of them are okay, like the spray bottles. Some of them, like the dosing funnel, not good for me, some people would like. And some of them pretty much ridiculous like this dosing cup. Now internally, and that's the info that I got from one of the viewers, engine power is 90 watts, uh, RPMs 120. Burrs, those special burrs, that's what makes this grinder so interesting. So you've got that pancake burrs. Uh, the top burr just crushes the beans and then uh, the bottom 71 millimeter shuriken burrs that just grinds uh, finely. They say that those burrs can grind easily 800 kg of uh, coffee before you need to change them. This grinder is assembled in a small batches in US. Pretty much most of that is, is done by hand. Uh, everything is aligned. So DF83, you have to play with that alignment. Engine also very good quality. They say it should last for 10,000 hours. The few things that I don't like, no light here. You don't really get a grind indicator. You just get a sticker. And then once you season your burrs, your settings will, would change. So you, you either have to redo the sticker or what I did, I just apply another sticker. So for that's a solution, but for high-end grinder, we would expect high-end solution. This grinder also can grind for everything, even pour over and French press. But if you want those coarser settings, you would end up beyond that uh, scale here. So possibly you would need another sticker just for those coarser brew methods. Cafetech without any beans, you pretty much cannot hear it. I've already recorded few videos about both of those grinders, so I will put the links in the description. The tension on both of them, very minimal. Uh, DF83, without the bellow, you can get up to 0.5 retention, usually less. With the bellow, pretty much 0.1, 0.2. Cafetech, without the blower, maybe 0.1, 0.2. With the blower, is pretty much zero. Very often, even without the blower whatever you put in that's what you get the one thing and one difference here is that for the cafe tech you 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 have to think about that rdt even here in uk wet climate uh, but i still think that i need that one spray because otherwise the static would be an issue I've never had an issue with that on my DF83. Maybe with the, those coarser grind settings, but for espresso, I've never really had a need to use uh, a spray bottle. So now, uh, espresso time. Um, I could overcomplicate those uh, those tests. I could run different uh, varieties, different profiles, and so on. And to be honest, I did. Uh, this video took over two weeks, and I ran lots of different tests but let's make it simple let's put pull a londinium style shot on my descent 18 grams of coffee in 42 grams of uh, liquid out we're going to use horsham coffee roaster from ethiopia that's a naturally natural anaerobically processed coffee with the tasting notes of uh, kind of tropical and also l grey tea uh, lemongrass. I've chosen this coffee because it's got so many different flavor notes and that should show us any differences between those two grinders. Let me just quickly show you uh, how long it takes to grind 18 grams of coffee on each of those grinders and the noise because that's a significant difference. EF83 first you blink and you miss it. Seven seconds, seven, eight seconds, and it's done. Now with Cafetech, you put the beans when the burrs are rotating. And that's the noise. Again, you pretty much don't hear it at all. And it took about 22 seconds.
shot took 38 seconds, pretty much as it should be, no major channeling. Have a look. Shot looks really good. Remember that's a light roast coffee. Sweet and chocolatey aroma. Some, some kind of fruitiness. Maybe even raspberries. Cheers. Very nice body. I think I'm getting that little bit of the raspberryness, which I think it will be one of the first times I get that in this coffee. Not too sour, very chocolatey. There was a hint of bitterness, but now that bitterness mellowed into um, dark chocolate, there is sweetness, not too fruity, not too bitter, but leaning more towards darker flavors than a, than a fruity aromas. Not that much clarity, but overall satisfaction. The shot, is, shot tastes nice. Pineapple, uh, funky flavors, not so much. Let's quickly check the extraction. 9.12, very, very decent TDS. And that gives us, you see, 21% of the extraction, very strong. You could see the extraction wasn't, uh, didn't look as great as with uh, DF83 and the shot itself doesn't look that good. Now I've noticed with that MC5 it not always looks pretty. The smell, it's more fruity and a little bit less chocolatey. Cheers. Wow, <laughs> huge difference. Well, I'm happy because um, <laughs> it will be a boring video. So that's a fruit bomb. Body almost the same. I'm getting pineapple. I'm getting still that getting that raspberry. Uh, I'm getting sourness similar to what we got in the previous shot. But the previous shot there was that bitterness there. That was kind of a dark chocolatey bitterness. Here this is a minimum, minimal bitterness. Pretty much non-existent. There is a chocolatey. Uh, flavors, but the, the, the bitterness is gone. The ratio clarity to body on this shot is amazing. If you like fruitiness, if you like different flavor notes, that's layers of flavors. So you can each sip, you can look for different, mm. different nuances. So here there's chocolate, here there's pineapple, here there's raspberry, here there's something else. Let's quickly uh, check the refractometer on this one. And then we're going to do a latte. 9.77. <laughs> That's almost 23% extraction. So why why latte? What why flat white? Well, I don't know about you, but myself I only apart from my videos, I only drink one espresso shot a day in the morning before I go to the gym on my La Pavoni. So often what I drink is a flat white. Uh, I use uh, Oatly because I'm uh, lactose intolerant and for the coffee I will use the Higgins uh, coffee roastery, kind of old-fashioned, uh, has been around since 1940s. They supply tea and coffee to a royal palace and this particular coffee is the coffee from Nicaragua. I will use a trendy six bar uh, profile on this. If you ever wonder why I never do a flat white on the video for the videos, here is why. Well, I'm not great at latte art. Cheers guys. Nice cup of coffee, not too bitter, not too sour, not too sweet. Delicate flavor. Don't really taste that much, but overall it's a nice. Everybody would say, yeah, nice cup of coffee. Uh, flat white from a uh, cafe tech. It looks even worse, so I won't, I won't show you. Cheers. Here I'm getting more chocolatiness as well. Both were good, but this is more like a special. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Maybe some nuts, something like that. I'm getting more of the coffee flavor in this coffee than in the previous one. So now it's time for a pour over. In the background you can hear my brewista kettle. Uh, for the pour over again Higgins coffee roastery. But this time we're going to use the geisha. Uh, so kind of pineapple, peach and winey flavors. That's what we should get. That's a honey process. Geisha, 15 grams of coffee in, 225 uh, grams of liquid out. Let's do DF83 uh, first. I'm going to purge both of those grinders. I try different settings. Um, you see there's mud and there are big chunks. Sweetness, smell of kind of like a candy. Very sweet, very sweet smell. And some uh, like a green uh, floral uh, aroma. 
Cheers. I'm not getting those flavors. It's not like it's a bad cup. It's just like we, we lost the nuances here. Every now and then I get a okay-ish cup from uh, Pour Over DF83. Every now and then I get a cup like this one where the, the, the flavor notes are very muted. Some sourness, maybe the pineapple. As a cup of coffee, it's not bad. As a cup of uh, geisha coffee, where we would expect tons of flavor, nah. 1.27 TDS and the extraction over 16, 16 and a half. Even though uh, Cafetec took about the same time to extract, you can see the difference of this. Very, very muddy. Less, less of that candy smell. Cheers. It's, it's a different bud. <laughs> the other one was kind of muddy. In, in flavors, if you know what I mean. And we didn't get any nuances here. It's kind of um, on the bitter side and still no nuances. Both of them kind of bad. If I had to choose between those two uh, pour over cups, I would go for DF83 because it was less unpleasant. This is a bit more unpleasant. 1.4 and that's 17, almost 18%. So extraction is okay. It's just the, the, the flavor notes, I, I, I'm not getting them. So guys, if you are still here, by the way, definitely click like, subscribe to the channel. What I'm going to tell you now, it's based not just on what we did today, but on the, all the shots, all the coffees that I had with both of those grinders. If you are looking for a high-end grinder, you should definitely consider Cafetec MC5. I don't have much experience with those expensive grinders. That's the only one that I have so far. But it, it is really, really good. And it is so interesting to have both body and uh, nuances and the clarity in the same cup and it also makes good coffee better if you get a bad coffee it won't make any miracles you know but if you have a good coffee if you dial it in properly then you can get some amazing results df83 in between those uh, mid-range grinders df83 it's amazing i paid 600 pounds i i ordered it from espresso outlet and for that money, honestly, it's it's great. In UK, it costs a bit more, 850 pounds, so that it makes it a bit tricky because it moves to the range of uh, grinders like uh, Atom 75 and so on. I strongly believe that if we got some better bars for DF83, maybe those high uniformity, maybe other bars, it would have a fighting chance against the Cafetec. For today, Cafetec is a winner, but DF83, it's not a loser. It's my second best grinder. And the price difference is huge. If you have any of those grinders, let me know in the comments what you think about them. Do you agree with, with what I said today? Maybe you have a different opinions. I would really like to know. But for today, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack. This is my coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.